Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more Geography Now, and after a brief jump back to the E's, we are back to the M's with the Maldives. Before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I would love to be joined the Discord and follow me over at Twitch. I am playing through Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, let's, okay, that's out of the way. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. For years, you guys have been joking over and over by saying, Oh, by the time Geography Now gets to the Maldives episode, the country is going to be underwater. Well, ha 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 ha, guess who's still staying afloat? Islands don't float. Oh yeah, hey Hannah, how you doing? I'm marvelous. Hey Hannah, you know what? What? How would you like a lot of lines in this episode? That sounds great. Alright, you're in. Yeah. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Today we are covering the world's lowest country and one of the top tourist destinations in the world. There's more to this place than honeymoon bungalows on beaches. There's a story and culture behind this place. So let's mall dive into it. <laughs> Hannah, that's your cue. Barbie, no. You okay, when I say a bad pun, you just got to slap. Okay, ready? Good, go. Oh! I think you're getting the hang of this. Bum, bum, bum. If you look at the Maldives from space, it has a funny shape, almost like little polka dots in the middle of the ocean. First of all, the country is located in the Indian Ocean, right at the confluence of the Arabian Sea, just below India. It is made up of 26 vertical atolls north. So, uh, how much, how many, how, how much more time do the Maldives have before they're underwater? Do they, will they make it out of this decade? The south, and each atoll has will, they, will they make it into the 2030s? I feel like they're not. Number of small islands and islets and sandbars, about 1,200 to be exact. However, only 185 of them are inhabited. The country is divided into 19 administrative divisions and two administrative city councils. The capital, Malé, where nearly a quarter of the entire population lives, and the city of Adu in the south. Most of the islands on the atolls are incredibly small, and the largest one being Gan Island, being only 8 kilometers long and 3.4 kilometers wide. At only about 115 square miles, or 300 square kilometers, this makes the Maldives the smallest country in Asia by land area. However, keep in mind though, if we include water territory, the country takes up a space of about 35,000 square miles, or 90,000 square kilometers, which is over 99% of their territory. After the capital city, Mali, the largest cities are... Hold on. How the fuck did they do that? That is impressive. That that's damn. Cities are Adu City and Fubamula, both in the south, and they're the only parts of the country that are south of the equator. Adu having the longest road in the country at 14 kilometers long, connecting the various islands together over the reefs. The capital Mali in itself is only about six square kilometers in land area, but it's also incredibly densely packed. Like literally, an aerial view makes it look almost like downtown Tokyo. If you fly to this country nine times out of ten, you will most likely arrive at Mali's Velana International, which is on a completely separate island, Huhule. <laughs> it's a Brazilian inside joke for the longest time the only way you could transport okay. yourself to the city was by taking a water taxi or ferry which could cost travelers another extra fee upon arrival until just recently when they decided to build the bridge known as the china maldives friendship bridge funded in part by china set to open in august ah. 2018 this would connect the two islands for the first time allowing cars and land vehicles direct access to the airport from the capital otherwise surprisingly they have three other international airports hani madu international in the north villa international in the middle and gan international in the south some of you might be thinking, hey, I wanted to take a bus and check out the entire country. Would I be able to do that? <laughs> no. Well, why is that, Hannah? Well, let's just address the obvious. The Maldives is not exactly a backpacker's country. Everything is separated by water. And unless you own your own boat or seaplane, chances are you need to hire one, which will cost an extra couple hundreds or thousands of dollars. Mm. And unless you know a local that is willing to let you stay at their house and give you the best hookups, chances are you'll be paying an additional hundreds to thousands of dollars for accommodations. This is why the Maldives is famous for being a honeymoon destination. About a million people visit a year and usually rent out the A million? How do they fit that many people? Famous Maldivian luxury water bungalows that can go anywhere from about 500 to 2,000 a night. Usually oh. they come complete with glass floors to view the water below, top of the line furniture, jacuzzis, Wi-Fi, air conditioning, gourmet meals, and even pools. Hold on, let's, um, let's take a look at this. You are totally hearing your neighbors bang every, every single night you're hearing someone bang that <laughs> those are close enough the bungalows are not going to keep sound in you're hearing things if you go to the maldives you are hearing things now, especially since you're going on your honeymoon you'll also be making some of the noise 
Nice. I wish I had someone to love. Pay meals and I even pools. Wait, I don't understand. You can literally dive into the beautiful ocean from your bungalow. Why would you need another pool? Well, think about it. Why would you construct an extra bathroom in your house? Well, because if I don't want to use the first one, and also it kind of appreciates the value. Ah. Yep. <laughs> Although most major inhabited atolls do have luxury resorts, the Maldives is so much more than that. And I would say if you want the truest Maldivian experience, you have to sail or fly to a local island run and inhabited only by the locals with no bungalows. That's right. Right, Hannah. Islands like Badu or Fioari with thick palm forests. The streets of Didu in the north where you can watch local kids play soccer at the sports field. Oh, and what's this place? Kalaidu? It's pretty big and spacious with a nice lagoon but no major resorts. Hmm. Uh, it looks like you just searched Google Earth and chose any random secluded island. Yep, that's exactly what I did. And get back to work, Ken. Otherwise, uh, Hannah, how would you like to mention the top notable sites? I would. Male's Friday Mosque and the Golden Dome Huhu Male Mosque. The Tsunami Monument, the President's House, the Victory Mosque, Monument, Republic Square, the historic battleground of the Utimo Ganduvaru, the damaged Buddhist stupas, the Vasho Veo pool, and if you're curious, you can stop by this island where they throw all their trash. But yeah, other than hmm. that, every notable site is like a luxury bungalow villa. So now we're gonna try to give you some real good native Maldivian stuff. Luckily, nature does not disappoint. Let's discuss that. Bum, bum. Thank you, Hannah. Being the lowest country in the world, I mean, their highest point is only about two meters, has its advantages and disadvantages. What? First of all, the atoll two chains meters? that make up the country are split into three general sections divided by the Cardiva Channel in the north and the one and a half degree channel in the south, named after the line of latitude that separates it. The island lies on what is called the Chagos Lakadiv Ridge, an underwater volcanic plateau that stretches all the way from the southern tip of India into the middle of the Indian Ocean, close to the central Indian Ridge fault line. This plateau holds what is called the Chagos Archipelago, which which contain the islands that make up the Maldives, as well as the Chagos Islands or British Indian Ocean Territory, administered by the UK in the south, and Lakshadweep in the north, administered by India. The islands are too small to harbor any rivers, but some islands have small lakes and ponds, and the highest point of the country would most likely be the sand dunes of Hitadu Island. These can only reach up to about 2.4 oh meters. My God. All right, triple shot of espresso break. You know what time it is? Noah. You know the deal, take it away. Yep. Yes. Get out of here. All these islands have pretty much the same makeup. Coral islands with nice beaches, tropical vegetation. Inhabited islands typically grow crops like bananas, papayas, citrus, breadfruit, and drumstick trees, which by the way, produce benzoil. If you don't know what that is, we don't either. We just report it. Only about 10% of the actual land is cultivated for crops due to the poor, highly alkaline soil and permeation of salt water into the fresh groundwater deposits. This causes a problem as most of the residents depend on ground or rainwater for drinking purposes. Otherwise, when it comes to flora and fauna, the Maldives is about going down under water. The reefs in themselves contain nearly 200 species of coral, 1,100 species of fish, 3 species of sea turtle, 12 species of whales and dolphins, and 145 crab species. You can even feed stingrays or see bioluminescent plankton Ooh. wash up on the shores, lighting up the beaches on certain islands if you're lucky. No surprise, the Maldives is a huge seafood country. Their favorite fish being the skipjack tuna, and they love cooking up yellowfin, which is actually one of their national animals in addition to the white breasted water hen. That being said, the majority of food products must be imported as they cannot sustain their entire populace, let alone visitors based off the limited resources that they have. Speaking of the populace... Bum, bum. Once again, that was Noah. Thank you. Uh, follow him on Instagram. Send him fan mail. Whatever you want. You can find me. All right. So now we reach the most enigmatic. Yeah, I mean, we could just have a whole episode. Noah talking. That's fine. <laughs> aspect of the Maldives, the Maldivians. Who are they and what's their story? Well, first of all, the country has about 450,000 people and is a small. How do they even fit them? Where do they go? Smallest country in population in Asia. The country's citizens make up somewhere around 80% of the population and identify as ethnically Maldivian or Divehi, whereas the rest of the population are foreign expats and some illegal immigrants, mostly coming from Sri Lanka, Nepal, and Bangladesh. They use the Maldivian rufia as their currency. They use the types A, D, G, J, K, and L plug outlets. When you have a ton of tourists, you kind of have to accommodate and be creative. And they drive on the left. No! Maldives. It was so cool, and then you had to ruin it by driving on the wrong side of the road, goddammit.
side of the road. Now, before we move on, we might need to explain first what exactly an ethnic Maldivian is. Well, for one, the Maldivians are part of the broader Divehi ethnic group, which are kind of separated into three categories. The main group, located on all the islands from the top to Lamu, which make up about 70% of Divehis. The southern group, which inhabit the three southernmost atolls of the Maldives. They have a different accent and are closely related to the original Maldivians. And finally, the Minikoi, or the northernmost people, which used to be part of the Maldives, but then they seceded themselves to India and became part of Okay, that was weird. My internet was cutting in and out. Uh, anyways, I think we should be good now, hopefully. ...to be part of the Maldives, but then they seceded themselves to India and became part of the Lakshadweep Union territory. It's kind of like what Mayotte did with the Comoros. Yeah, I know. Don't remind me. The language they speak is called Divehi, a cousin of Sinhalese. It has kind of like a slight Arabic mix to it, and they write in a script called the Tana, which is also inspired off of Arabic. They used to have their own ancient writing system, but just like Javanese and Indonesia, it died out in the 20th century. Yeah, I know. Don't remind me. Otherwise, English is widely spoken, especially in the tourism sector. Unfortunately, freedom of religion is not quite exactly existent in the country. Oh. The country's official state religion is Islam, practiced or at least claimed by over 98% of the population. And by default, all citizens by decree of the constitution are required to be Muslim. They are not allowed to renounce or convert and non-Muslims are almost never granted citizenship. Non-citizens and visitors, of course, are free to believe whatever they want, but they are not allowed to publicly proselytize or practice anything other than Islam. Which is strange because for the longest time, the Maldives was a heavily Buddhist country for centuries. We'll get into that later. Culture-wise, they are seafarers, ocean people. If they aren't sailing the traditional Dhoni boats, they're swimming or fishing, making crafty oar blade patterns, Ooh. using swing beds, making lacquerware or pattern mats. And don't be shocked to find people dancing on the beach, playing music with the strange bubul tarang instrument. Which brings us to history. We don't have enough time to get into it, but in the quickest way I can put it, Girovaru people, the first settlers, come in from South India, the arrival of the Sinhalese people, the first royal dynasties, Buddhist period, Lunar Dynasty, conversion to Islam. That goes, that name go. that dynasty name goes hard. The Lunar Dynasty? The Moon Dynasty? Fucking hell yeah, that slaps. Um, the Portuguese come in, British protectorate, country becomes a republic, tourism starts in the 70s, reign of president Mamun, the 2004 tsunami, democratic elections in 2008, post-tsunami development boom, and here we are today. In addition, yeah. some famous or notable like Maldivian good. people throughout history might include Ibrahim Nasir, Yamin Abdul Gayum, Mohammed Nasheed, singer Unusha, Yuma Mohammed, Sunita Ali, Sizan Ali, Ali Ramiz, Naifaru Tohoko, Nazmi Johnston, Hassan Hassan Saeed, Ahmed Ridwan, and Yamin Rashid. Whew. All right, that was quite a few uh, interestingly pronounced names. Let's move on to the friend zone. Bum, bum, bum. Now, the Maldives is a high tourism country, but they are also a very high diplomatic country as well. The UK is probably the closest European friend as they still hold ties from being a British protectorate. However, things got a little weird after they decided to leave the Commonwealth. With India, it's complicated because in the past, they have accused India of interfering in their affairs, and India has shown bitterness in the past with them doing things like declining the renewal of Indian visas and reaching out to Pakistan. Nonetheless, India is still a huge player in aid and support, and as much as they disagree, India has to kind of strategize their diplomacy before China gets to cozy with them, especially after building that bridge. The UAE and Singapore are like the superhero friends that they look up to. They are the biggest import partners and they really aspire to become something like them. You know, a nation limited in space and resources yet diversified and thriving economically. They always watch them and take notes. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Maldivians I have talked to have said probably Sri Lanka. The two countries have a long history and shared culture. They both speak similar languages. The Sri Lankan military trains theirs. Many tours to the Maldives are also dependent on them as they operate in joint packages. And after the 2004 tsunami, Sri Lanka was one of the first friends to jump in and help them. In conclusion, the Maldives is like the lowest nation in the world, but they also kind of literally personify this saying that when you reach the bottom, there's only one way left to go. Stay tuned, Mali. I mean, they're going, they're going further down. And that was Geography Now in Maldives. I've got nothing to add here at the end. This was a well-paced one, I think. Uh, for the For this country, I think that's pretty much pretty freaking good. Uh, I think this was perfectly paced for such a tiny country, um, and yeah, the amount of information was good. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.